Samsung just unveiled its new Galaxy Flip 4 and Fold 4 smartphones. And while the foldable category has had a rocky past, four years later, Samsung, the world's largest smartphone maker, says that they've never been better or more durable. But what you might not know is phone makers already have ideas for how to make designs that are even more flexible. Like, what if your phone could roll into whatever size you wanted? And that all begs the question, are flexible screens just a gimmick or are they actually here to stay? I went to Samsung's showcase in New York to get an early preview and find out if I could answer those questions. Samsung says it has focused a lot of attention on the durability of these foldable phones. That's because when it first came out in 2019, reviewers noted that there were some problems with the hinge and screen protector, which looks like you're supposed to peel it off, but you aren't. Well, Samsung quickly addressed the initial criticism and now says the new versions use an even stronger adhesive to attach the screen protector. The company has also strengthened the area around the crease in the middle for added support. Because of this, Samsung says the Flip 4 and Fold 4 have a front panel that's 45% stronger than previous models. The fine tuning shows how invested Samsung is in the category, but foldables are much bigger than any one company. Rivals Lenovo, Huawei, and others have also released foldable devices. Prices play a major role in how many people actually buy foldable phones. When the Fold first launched, it cost about $2,000 and was much too expensive to appeal to the masses. It now costs $1,800, still significantly more than Apple's flagship iPhone 13 Pro Max, which costs $1,099. As for the Flip, it launched at $1,380 and is now selling for $1,000. Analysts told me that the price drop helped Samsung appeal to a lot more people and sell a lot more units. The company held 88% of the foldable market last year, with the Galaxy Z Flip 3 and Z Fold 3 being the most popular devices globally. And the number of foldable phone options continues to grow. Rivals Xiaomi, Oppo, and Lenovo have also made foldable phones, while Apple, the main holdout, holds patents for foldable phones. No word on when or if it'll actually come out. But the number of foldables sold still remains low when you compare them to smartphone sales overall. Foldables make up less than 1% of the market. Analysts told me that foldables will likely remain niche for years to come and not replace the bar-shaped phones we're all used to seeing. At least, not for the foreseeable future. Because while you can get phones like this at virtually any price point, foldables like this require special parts that make them more expensive. Phone makers are also looking for ways to bust out of the old rectangular phones we're all used to seeing. And more flexible screens allow companies to figure out where demand truly lies. Whether you're willing to shell out $1,800 on foldable screens or not, they kind of force you to think about the future and what might be next. We don't know if it's foldables, rollables, or something we've never seen yet. But change and trying something different is what brought us the iPhone. So perhaps reinventing the displays we're all used to seeing, maybe that'll give us the next big thing.